My main reason for creating this video is to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11, which was the first lunar mission to put humans on the surface of the moon. The Apollo moon landings are arguably one of the crowning achievements in the history of our history. I think more people need to appreciate the fact that these events actually happened. My other hope for this video is that it might winkle out a handful of dopey conspiracist knob sockets. Their irrefutable evidence, the power of their logic and reason, and the beauty of their watertight intellectual arguments is usually something of a joy to behold. Neil Armstrong took his first steps onto the lunar surface on the 21st of July 1969. This historic event occurred one year and one day before something even more wonderful happened on planet Earth, the birth of me, which I at least consider pretty important. In this video, rather than focusing on the rather obvious reasons why the moon landings could not possibly have been staged, I'm going to focus on something a bit more visual. We're going to have a look at the documentary footage of Apollo 17 from 1972, and we're going to compare it with modern imaging of the moon to provide compelling evidence that the Apollo missions were obviously not staged. Whilst I still don't think this evidence is likely to convince any of the internet's conspiracy lunatics, who are as mad as a box of frogs, we sure can give it the old college try. Many people don't understand why we can't see evidence of the Apollo missions with modern telescopes. Surely if we can see objects billions of light years away with the Hubble Space Telescope, then we should be able to see evidence of the moon landings with it too. After all, the moon is a lot closer. But the galaxies that are being imaged by Hubble are incomprehensibly large, perhaps hundreds of thousands of light years across. The Andromeda Galaxy, our nearest major galaxy, is 220,000 light years in diameter. Can you honestly visualise how far that is? That's over a quintillion miles. Do you even know what that means? It's a crazy distance. I'll wager that brain has never had to think of such things. It turns out that imaging something 4 metres across from 238,000 miles away is far more difficult than taking pictures of galaxies. In fact, it's like trying to see something the size of a coin from a thousand miles away. This fantastic video by Curious Droid gives further reasons why we simply can't hope to see evidence of the Apollo missions from Earth. Thankfully, we do have a means of exploring actual physical evidence of the moon landings, and that includes missions by the Soviet space program such as Luna, and even a recent mission by China. Look at that beautiful piece of Soviet technology. You've just got to marvel at how damn 70s it looks. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO, is a robotic spacecraft made by NASA which is currently orbiting the Moon. It was launched aboard an Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral on June 18, 2009. The data collected by LRO's seven scientific instruments has been described as essential for planning NASA's future human and robotic missions to the Moon. One of the instruments on board the LRO is a series of cameras called LROC, which have been taking high-resolution images of the Moon's surface for the last 10 years or so. LRO has now orbited the Moon over 40,000 times and mapped over 98.2% of the Moon's surface. This means that we now have higher resolution images and models of the Moon's surface than we have ever had before. The resolution of the cameras is so good that we can see the descent stages of the Apollo missions, which have been sat silently on the surface for the best part of 50 years. We can see the scientific instruments left on the Moon to gather data. And perhaps most amazing of all, we can even see the maze of tracks left by the astronauts and the lunar rovers. Surprisingly, we can use the tracks left in the lunar soil by the crew of Apollo 17 as a spectacular piece of evidence that the moon landings were genuine events. Thankfully, the tracks are not eroded as they are here on Earth, as the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. Other factors, however, mean that there is likely to be no trace of the Apollo missions in the next 10 to 100 million years. It's time to move on to the meat and spuds of this video. The evidence. Apollo 17 was the last manned mission to land on the moon. The crew of Eugene Cernan, Harrison Schmidt and Ronald Evans returned to Earth on December 19, 1972, having spent over 12 days in space. Over the last 50 years, the dead and debunked theories of every moon landing denying nutcase have been figuratively stuffed into a large coffin. Whilst the lid has already been firmly nailed shut by an enormous wealth of evidence, what I'm about to show you effectively superglues the coffin shut and then buries it under 12 feet of concrete too. Using the documentary footage from 1973 and comparing it with the images returned by the LRO cameras, 
we will examine undeniable evidence that the crew did indeed land on the surface of the moon. Off we hop to YouTube to find the documentary. Jumping 23 minutes into the documentary, we are able to witness the astonishing footage of the ascent stage ignition sequence. Pitch over is a manoeuvre that steers a rocket, or in our case the ascent stage of the lunar module, into the correct orbit. It is usually done by gimballing the rocket engine slightly to direct some of the thrust to one side. Here you can see this J2X rocket engine gimballing. However, the Apollo ascent stage didn't have a gimballed engine and instead had to rely on its reaction control system. This is a set of 16 thrusters that are part of the lunar module. In the footage from the documentary, Listen carefully for the moment when the astronauts excitedly announce, pitch over. At this particular moment, the ascent stage of the lunar module changes direction and we will be treated to a fantastic view of the Apollo 17 landing site. Incredible, a rocket powered ascent from the surface of the moon. What a thing to have experienced. The bravery needed is quite literally out of this world. Let's get back to the evidence. Rather than using the raw TV footage, I'm going to use the higher quality 16mm film footage that the documentary itself used. This camera was mounted to the pilot's window in the lunar module. This footage is also available on YouTube on the Apollo Flight Journals channel. I'm going to find a still frame which gives me the best combination of size and clarity of the tracks. Taking this screenshot into Photoshop, I'm going to make some minor adjustments to the sharpness and the contrast to bring out some of the track detail. Next, it's time to download a high resolution LROC image of the Apollo 17 landing site. For any moon landing deniers still losing their grip on reality, notice how these images are hosted by a university and not by NASA. I'm going to download this enormous raw TIFF file which is nearly half a gigabyte in size. Taking this file into Photoshop, we can explore the staggering detail on this 534 megapixel image. Zooming in on this particular region of the image, we have a fantastic view of this extensive boulder field which definitely wouldn't have made a good landing site. Zooming into another region of the image, we can clearly see the evidence of the Apollo 17 mission back in 1972. I'm cropping out the region we're interested in and enhancing its contrast. Now that we have both of our images together, we will need to match their scale and orientation in order to see if they are a good match for each other. First, I'm going to get them in the same orientation. I'm using the two mini craters on the rims of the two larger craters near the lunar module as reference points for the rotation. Both images have now been rotated so that they are in the same orientation. It's already clear that the tracks are an extremely good match. Now we need to measure the distance between the same two landmarks on each image. The left hand image measures 681 pixels, whilst the right hand image measures 259 pixels. We can use this information to get the images to have the same scale. It's now hard sums o'clock where we divide the two values to give us our scale factor. We can use this to reduce the larger image down to the same scale as the smaller LROC image. After scaling, we can check the reference points on each image to see if the distance is now the same. Perfect! We can now cut and paste one image into the other to find out if the tracks tie up. By lowering the opacity on one of the images and overlaying them, you can see that the tracks are tying up fantastically well. However, the tracks don't tie up perfectly. Why is that? In fact, it's due to the pitch over manoeuvre that we talked about earlier that puts the astronauts into the right orbit to get back home. They are looking across the landing site rather than directly down on it like the LRO cameras do. Thankfully, we can correct for that distortion by using the perspective correction tools in Photoshop. I'm going to make these minor adjustments to the perspective of the screen capture from the 16mm film footage. In doing so, I'm going to use the reference points of other craters and surface features to match the perspective as best I can. Here's the result of that perspective correction. 
allowing for the variation in lighting conditions due to the different position of the sun in each image, it's very clear that these tracks are a perfect match. Amazingly, we can do the same for the Apollo 15 mission too. Once again, allowing for differences in lighting conditions, the tracks are an absolutely perfect match. In addition to imaging all six of the Apollo landing sites, the LRO has also provided images and precise locations of landers and equipment from previous lunar missions, including the Russian Lunar 16 sample return mission which I covered earlier. Close inspection of images taken of the Russian Lunar 20 mission from 1972 shows something exceptionally interesting. In the first image, the sun is in the west. On a different pass over the landing site by the LRO, the sun is in the east. Notice how the shadows cast by the Lunar 20 lander change due to the different relative position of the sun in each image. Paying closer attention, however, it's clear that there is a distinctive shadow being cast by the lander in each image. Remarkably, it's very likely to be the shadow cast by the hinged sample return arm of the Lunar 20 lander. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. A genuine question for the moon landing deniers. How the hell would we know all of this if the LRO wasn't a real spacecraft taking real pictures of real landing sites? The inevitable sound of a thicket of Apollo conspiracy crackpots. They've started furiously typing unsupported and regurgitated nonsense online in an attempt to justify their absurd beliefs to anyone dull enough to listen. Unfortunately, the problem with the clowns of the moon landing conspiracy community is that even when presented with evidence as clear and unambiguous as I have in this video, they will still bend over backwards to try to internally rationalise evidence that contradicts their position. This usually takes the form of fabricating excuses that have absolutely no evidence to support them. If, for example, I had chosen to present the very real and completely independent evidence for the Apollo landing sites by the lunar spacecraft of other nations such as India, China, Japan, the response would be, they are in on it too. I firmly believe that even if we actually flew a moon landing denier to the moon and parked right next to the mission hardware from an Apollo landing, they would still find it hard not to blurt out, well this could have been put there last week for all I know. I'm special. This highlights the absurdity of moon landing conspiracy nutbags. There is literally no evidence that could convince them. Another approach that they are fond of is simple and uncomplicated denial. YouTube user Truth and Pain provided the following particularly articulate and considered rebuttal on a video debunking a number of Apollo conspiracy theories. We should definitely go and have a mooch at their YouTube channel to determine if they are a fan of science, logic, reason and critical thinking. Okay Mr Truth and Pain, let's see what you're all about. What have we got here? Into the playlist? Oh, oh Flat Earth, that's not a good sign. Well, we knew about the moon landing denial, but Flat Earth, Jesus. What else have we got here? Another playlist. Oh no, the truth about vaccines. I'm sorry. <laughs> really? Amazeballs. We have located the holy grail of internet ignorance. A Flat Earth supporting, moon landing denying anti-vaxxer. You chose poorly. All we need now is chemtrails and lizard people for a full house. Do you still think the royal family were shape-shifting lizards? Yes, I do. You do? Yes. Collect the whole set. This video presents a tiny fragment of evidence from an enormous iceberg of Apollo mission data. If you're a curious person with an inquiring mind, there is no reason why the evidence needs to remain submerged from your view. It's easy to dive in and discover more. The data shown in this infographic is still just a tiny fraction of the immense weight of evidence for the moon landings. Unfortunately, a mountain of evidence is unlikely to convince a moon landing conspiracist of the nonsense that they believe in, and there are very good reasons for this. 
Psychology and Cognitive Science has identified nearly 200 cognitive biases, many of which are completely subconscious. Sadly, these biases, or errors in the way that we think, affect the decisions and judgments that we make every single day. Many of these biases are pretty sinister, drawing us towards details which confirm beliefs that we already hold and making us undervalue or reject information which contradicts those beliefs. Unfortunately, these mental failures cause us to make decisions based on what might be pleasing to imagine rather than what is actually true. Richard Dawkins once famously said, if something is true, no amount of wishful thinking will change it. To any thinking person, the correlation of the LRO images with the documentary footage from nearly 50 years ago is an unbelievably convincing piece of evidence. The mental gymnastics required in order to deny it would be comically absurd. What? I know nothing! No, 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 no! Nothing! The aim of this video isn't to change the minds of the moon landing deniers, but rather to ridicule them for their mindlessly dumb beliefs. I hope this video gives you the courage to challenge and mock anyone that dares to suggest that the moon landings were a NASA conspiracy. To be clear, the data is absolutely definitive. Humans landed on the surface of the moon six times between 1969 and 1972. The Apollo program deserves to be remembered as the breathtaking feat of human creativity, ambition and ingenuity that it was. We owe the people involved that much. If you want to see more content from Mise Particle, please feel free to like, subscribe and share. Massive thanks go to the hugely talented composer and musician Vasilis Natsu for the music used throughout this video.